I think of myself as kind of a modernist filmmaker, you know, calling into uh, question um, craft, uh, you know, and the sort of ontological truth value of, of cinema. Um, I'm interested in exposing the sort of the blood and guts, and, uh, and I think Putty Hill does that to a certain extent. So I guess, you know, it's a film that demands participation that I hope surprises audiences, which is certain, uh, certainly a, a goal of mine. As a film watcher, I like to be surprised, so uh, that's always sort of in the, in the forefront of, m of my imagination when I'm developing a new scenario or a screenplay. When I was young, I was really drawn to anything that like portrayed any kind of counterculture on screen, so films like Suburbia, Repo Man, uh, Decline of Western Civilization. Um, I was really interested in David Lynch as well. He was probably a first favorite director. Um, Wild at Heart in particular. I took to Robert Bresson as well, who was a big influence on my first film, Hamilton, definitely. Uh, Godard, um, uh, to a lesser extent Tarkovsky. Um, and then I discovered Pedro Costa uh, in the last few years, and uh, uh, in Vanda's room in particular, um, was a big, big influence on, on Putty Hill. I'd seen maybe 500 auditions in Baltimore, um, mostly people who'd never acted for the camera before. Um, and when you audition people that, that are non-professional, you know, your expectations aren't that they'll necessarily like, be able to read the script and, and deliver the lines with authenticity or emotional honesty. You're like looking for something else. You know, some people that I interviewed had never read a script before, so um, it's more about asking questions. And I saw a number of people that, that had a, a real quality that, that um, uh, read on screen that's like a, a filmic quality and uh, would call them back, got to know them, spent time with them, their families. I built a film around the people that I'd, that I'd cast, um, you know, people that I wanted to see on screen who I'd gotten to know and who led really interesting lives and so um, the, the very like narrative was the construct, the, the fiction was, was built around these individuals. The idea for Corey just came about, you know, so thinking about um, you know, people I've known uh, that I've lost, um, uh, a desire to explore um, character through their absence. The idea of like getting to know a character who's, who we never see on screen has always interested me. Um, you know, I, I spent a lot of time, you know, I spent a lot of time as a, as a young adult imagining my own death, so it was easy to sort of like think about this, this, this kid who's, who's died. Um, and uh, the way that affects everyone around him. So Corey, in a way, acts kind of like a, as a MacGuffin, but, but um, does bring um, a level of emotionality to the film, and I think that's what audiences respond to. I think uh, the second tattoo scene is a favorite of mine. Um, just kind of worked out, I don't know, exactly as I imagined it. I mean, sometimes things turn out better than you imagine them. Um, but I knew that I wanted to sort of recreate an experience I had with Spike when I first started hanging out with him um, in his apartment where he tattoos clients um, on a summer night where I heard birthday sex for the first time. And, and, uh, and it all just kind of came together. We found those young men that day who come in, who get the tattoos. Uh, the light was just right. Um, there's a kind of like palpable energy to that scene and uh, and I like the little the little details like the the, the way the sort of like uh, blunt smoke permeates the room and and the, the, the flashlight um, on the one kid's phone lights up the, the tattoo the spray bottle as the water creates mist it's like all those little things we didn't plan they just happened in the moment um, and the fact that the tattoo is finished on screen is satisfying too you know, at some point, allow, like, I think, succumb to whatever sort of economic reality you're working in and, and allow that to feed uh, the creative life of the, of the project. It can energize a project. In the case of Putty Hill, I think it did. You know, having limited resources, having only 12 days to shoot, it, it dictated, you know, you know the, the elements we put into play, uh, you know, where we placed our energy. You know, we didn't have time to write a full feature script, thus the five-page treatment. It allowed for a lot more improvisation, which I think 
you know, really comes across and invigorates the, uh, you know, the, uh, the performances and, and everything. You know. The most remarkable thing about the film to me is just the level of performance. You know, the fact that none of the actors were professional, n none of the dialogue was written. Um, I think if I learned anything uh, from this process, it's just that you, you, know, you can put a lot of trust in your, your collaborators and end up with a much stronger project than, than if you're trying to uh, maintain control of everything. I think directing is as much about like releasing control as it is, you know, about maintaining control.